हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू लेक्चर थर्टीन ऑफ द ऑनलाइन कोर्स ऑन फोटोनिक क्रिस्टल्स फंडामेंटल्स एंड एप्लीकेशंस टूडेज लेक्चर विल बी ऑन फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ टू डी फोटोनिक क्रिस्टल्स हेयर इज द लेक्चर आउटलाइन विल हैव ए क्विक इंट्रोडक्शन टू द टॉपिक एंड देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट स्क्वायर लेटिस ऑफ डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉलम्स विल ऑल्सो कंसिडर ए स्क्वायर लेटिस ऑफ डायलेक्ट्रिक वेन्स देन वील सी हाउ वी कैन अचीव कंप्लीट बैंड गैप फॉर ऑल पोलराइजेशन will further discuss the localization of light by point defects and application of linear defects and web guides so when we discuss photonic crystal always remember these two gentlemen who are the pioneer pioneer of uh, photonic crystal so this is the picture of ali evlanovich and this is uh, sajeev john so um ali evlanovich co-invented the concept of photonic band gap along with uh, sajeev john and uh, he made the first photonic band gap crystal okay and uh, sajeev john as i mentioned he invented this uh, concept of photonic band gap along with him and uh, he also in invoked the notion of photon localization so let us have a quick introduction to photonic 2d photonic crystal so this is how a 2d photonic crystal will look like so it is basically a periodic structure along two lateral dimensions say x and y okay and it is homogeneous along the third axis that is uh, z so a photo 2d photonic crystal will have this z axis infinitely long right now you can actually consider this typical specimen where you can think of a square lattice of dielectric columns which are having radius of r and they have dielectric permittivity of epsilon so a marks here the lattice period okay so what we will see that uh, for certain values of um, this lattice constant a and uh, radius r you will be able to see a photonic band gap uh, in the xy plane that means for those particular frequencies okay no propagation of electromagnetic wave or light is allowed through this crystal right so that will tell us that no extended modes are permitted inside the band gap so what will happen to the incident light that will simply get reflected okay so when we talk about a 2d photonic crystal it can prevent light from propagating in any direction within that plane okay so always remember so when we are talking about 2d photonic crystal so you can actually have light falling in any angle within this xy plane but then from all direction light should get reflected if the frequency of that incident light falls within the photonic band gap now what happens along z direction the system is homogeneous along z direction so there are no restrictions on the wave vector kz so that is how we come to this we can actually take help of the symmetries of the crystal to categorize its uh, electromagnetic modes right so as i mentioned this system is basically homogeneous in z direction so the modes must be oscillatory in this particular direction with no restrictions on wave vector kz um, in addition the system will have discrete um, translational symmetry along the xy plane where we have discussed this before that when you have periodicity along the dielectric constant you can express it as epsilon of r to be equal to epsilon small r plus capital r where capital r could be any linear combination of the primitive lattice vector a a x cap and a y cap okay so you can think of a you know primitive lattice vector small t1 cap that will be equal to ax cap and small t2 cap that will be uh, along equals to ay cap right so you can actually think of capital r as any linear combination of these two primitive lattice vectors right so now if you apply block theorem you can actually focus our attention on those values of k that are within the brillouin zone right 
So, by indexing the modes of the crystal okay, by k z, k parallel and n. So, what is n? n represents the band number. Okay. You can now write the familiar form of the block states. So, you can write h, n, k z, k parallel okay, as a function of r can be written as e to the power i k parallel rho and then e i to the power k z z okay and then you have u rho okay. So, in this particular equation what is rho? Rho is basically the projection of the position vector r in the x y plane. So, once again keep this figure in mind that the crystal is periodic along x and y and it is homogeneous along z okay. So, you can also think of that u rho is basically a periodic function. So, whenever you say periodic function it is like u rho can be written as u rho plus capital R and that, that is true for all the lattice vectors R right and any lattice vector R can be expressed as a linear combination of the primitive two lattice vectors right A x cap and A y cap. So, when we talk about k parallel, k parallel is the uh, wave vector uh, in x y plane and that should be restricted to the boolean zone ok. However, your k z is unrestricted right. So, any modes with uh, k z equals 0 that means, if uh, the mode propagates strictly parallel to the x y plane ok, they are invariant under reflections through the x y plane ok. And for T transverse electric mode ok, they have magnetic field H normal to the plane. So, you can write uh, H equals H rho z cap ok, whereas you have uh, electric field which is basically in the plane. So, you can write E rho dot z cap ok will be 0. On the other hand, if you look into the transverse magnetic case ok, so you can say that uh, E equals E rho z cap whereas, you can write the magnetic field in that direction along the direction of uh, you know z cap will be 0. So, the dot product is 0. Now, let us come to some specific examples and discuss how we get band gap right and how do how can we obtain complete band gap. When I say complete band gap you need to obtain band gap for both the polarization T and T m and also for all the possible k parallel values ok. So, let us consider light to propagate and you know in the x y plane and we are considering basically a square array of dielectric which has got a lattice constant of a ok. So, what is this uh, square array of dielectric cylinder made of? So, you can consider the cylinders to be made of alumina which is epsilon equals 8.9 ok. So, these are those rods which are in air ok and uh, the radius to lattice constant ratio is 0 0.2. So, this is basically the photonic band structure of this uh, square array of dielectric columns right. So, once again what is there here on the x axis you have marked the k parallel wave vectors right while traversing along this uh, boundary of the irreducible brilliant zone. So, important points of symmetry here is gamma x m and gamma. So, you actually travel from gamma to x to m to gamma right and then you actually obtain uh, those frequencies for which there is a solution to the Maxwell's equation right. Now, in this particular diagram ok the band structure for both T and T m modes are shown ok. So, the T m modes are shown in blue and the T modes are shown in red ok and the frequency is basically dimensionless because you have normalized it you have written it as uh, uh, omega a by 2 pi c which is also expressed as a by lambda right. So, as I mentioned this is basically you know uh, in plane wave vector which is uh, k parallel. So, what is the square that is shown here? 
that is basically the brilliant zone for this square lattice and if you see this blue shaded triangular region that represents the irreducible brilliant zone. So, we have discussed this in the previous lectures and I hope this concept is clear to all of you. So, that is why if we only travel around this irreducible brilliant zone that would give us the information about the entire brilliant zone because this can be rotated and this other white triangle can be formed. So, you can actually get information about this quarter. Once you have this quarter, you can actually um, take a mirror symmetry and get this entire upper half. Once you have this entire upper half, you can have this mirror symmetry, horizontal mirror and then you can get, you know, the bottom half and the entire balloon zone. So, only this particular blue shaded region contains independent values of k parallel for which you need to gather the information of which all frequencies are supported in this crystal. So, continuing this discussion, you can also try to mark this important points of symmetry. So, gamma can be written as k parallel equals 0, okay, and uh, the point x can be written as pi by a x cap comma 0, okay, and for m, you have k parallel which is pi by a x cap plus pi by a y cap okay so that is how you can actually mark the different you know directions of the parallel you know wave vector so basically this gives you information of all the direction of light propagation or in light falling on this particular crystal along the x y plane right so this is the, the reason why we have plotted k parallel only along the edge of the brilliant zone is that the minima and the maxima of the a given band okay, uh, which would determine the band gap eventually almost occurs at the zone edges and often at the corner. Right. So, here also you can carefully see that if you consider the blue color lines only so this is tm mode okay so this will be band number 1 for tm mode and this other blue line tells you it is band number 2 for tm mode so if you consider tm mode you can see that there is a band gap right for uh, for all the values of k you are actually able to find a band gap so, you need to find whether that gap exists for all the value of k or not. If not, then that is not useful. Okay. How about T modes? You consider the red lines. So, this is the fundamental one. So, n equals 1 T mode and this one is n equals 2 T mode and you see that there is no gap between these two. Only gap is here, but then this gap does not exist for all the values of k. It means T mode does not show a band gap in this particular structure. So, you can also you know analyze this further by considering the displacement field pattern. That means, if you plot D okay, or the Z component of uh, D for this T M modes of the first band and the second band. So, we are considering only the blue lines here. So, this one is for the first band and this one is for the second band okay and we are plotting it at uh, the gamma point okay so in one case it's here okay and the other case it is here okay so these are the two different frequencies that you can see okay and uh, if you look into the plot that the what is important here to see that the field pattern is exactly same at each unit cell okay however when you move to x point and to m point you see the field pattern okay um, are not exactly same at each uh, unit cell rather the field patterns actually alternate in each unit cell along the direction of the wave factor kx okay uh, forming you know wave fronts which are basically parallel to y direction right 
in the case of x point clear so here you can see all blue that means negative values of dz then you have all red values that means it's a positive values of dz and then again negative here is like negative positive okay and so on and then here it alternates okay it's positive negative and then again it flips you get negative positive and so on right now if you consider for m point if you consider for m point the sign of the field alternate in every unit cell it's not like here here at least you know column wise they are same okay oh sorry uh, along a particular column yeah it is same but here for every alternate cell it is changing okay so that forms a kind of checkerboard pattern and the lower bands always remember the lower band is called uh, dielectric band and the upper band is called uh, air band if you remember from our previous discussion so the band above the band gap is called air band the band below the band gap is called dielectric band so you can actually see that the left figure is for dielectric band the right one is for air band for each of the points that you have plot right so in this particular case the field of air band at m point okay are also looking like you know degenerate uh, one one of a pair of degenerate states because you can see that you know they are similar kind of you know patterns that you see along this uh, front okay so what is important here is to note that this is how you can analyze the displacement fields of the tm states in a square array of dielectric columns in air okay so what it has given it has given you tm band gap right and we have also seen the modes at this important points gamma x and m how they look like so gamma is basically the here you have seen in the top then you know this is the x point this is the um, m point and each set okay only in the case of m point we have seen that the air band actually shows you know uh, degenerate states we can further analyze that what happens to um, t modes right so here you have seen the t modes the red ones they do not actually show any band gap right so the field patterns of the t modes at x point so if you consider only the x point there is a small gap here okay so for the first band and the second band is shown in this case so what you can see say that these t modes have this displacement field or displacement mode lying in the x y plane and the column positions are basically indicated by this dashed green outlines if you are able to see here clearly okay and then the colors basically represent the strength of the uh, magnetic field so we are not plotting uh, dz here we are basically plotting the hz okay the z component of the magnetic fields okay so that's the difference between um, the tm mode and the, here we are plotting dz whereas here we are plotting hz okay so this t modes they are having this uh, d which is lying in the x y plane right so this d is called the um, displacement mode fine so since d is largest along the nodal planes of h so you can actually see that the white regions are where the displacement energy is concentrated and that is uh, this point okay means where your h field is kind of minimal you will have strongest uh, d field okay or the displacement modes so you can see the patterns are different for dielectric band and air band okay and this tells you uh, why you are actually seeing 
TM band gap in the case of square array of uh, dielectric cylinders. Now let us consider another structure which is basically a square lattice of dielectric veins. So what is a vein? Dielectric veins will be like you know this is a square grid of connected wires kind of structure. Okay. So you can consider the thickness to be uh, 0.165a and the material let us keep it to be same epsilon equals 8.9 as we have considered in the previous case right. So here again you can try to read the photonic band structure you have this parallel wave vectors plotted here gamma x m gamma are nothing but you know the points along the edges of the irreducible brilliant zone. So, here also you are having a square lattice. So, it is the same style of plotting the irreducible brilliant zone. And if you look carefully at this particular photonic band structure, you see that for TM modes, okay, you are having a band gap, okay. No. For TM modes which are basically blue in color, so they, they do not have any opening throughout. You see there is opening here, there is opening here, but if you try to find if there is opening throughout, they, they, it does not look like having a you know opening for all the frequencies. Okay, Let us try to draw it like this, yeah you see they do not have anything like this. Okay, But if you look carefully for the T modes that is the red color curves. So, this curve and this curve this corresponds to n equals 1 and this one corresponds to n equals 2. So, clearly this time T modes have got band gap whereas TM modes do not support any band gap. So, this structure is basically complementary to the square lattice of dielectric columns because it is a connected structure and because of that you also see complementary nature in the photonic band gap. So, here you are seeing T band gap whereas in the previous case we have seen TM band gap right. So, here the high permittivity regions form a continuous path in the xy plane instead of di discrete spots ok. Now, if you try to carefully analyze uh, what happens to you know the x point ok for the tm case that is for the blue uh, curves you can see that you know the fields of the dielectric bands are mainly confined to this dielectric crosses and the vertical veins ok. Whereas, the field in the air band if you consider the air band which is basically the band which is above the band gap though in, in this case we do not have a proper band gap for all the frequencies, but at x point we do have a gap. Okay? So, if you consider uh, the diagram of uh, dz field or the distribution of dz field for air band, okay, you will see that uh, the fields are concentrated in the horizontal dielectric veins which are connecting the square uh, lattice sites right. So, the consecutive modes both manage to concentrate in high permittivity region yes and that is mainly because of the arrangement of dielectric veins and that is why there is no large jump in frequency. If you remember that you can only see a jump in frequency if one mode is concentrated in the high permittivity region and the next mode is concentrated in the low permittivity region. In this case both the modes are basically concentrated in high permittivity region though their distribution is slightly different that is why there is a slight opening up here, but they do not give you a proper band gap for all the you know possible values of k parallel right. So, with that analogy you can also see one more time over here so, what, what is happening in this case and why you do not have a band gap for T mode at x point ok. You can analyze this as well. Now, if you look into the 
t modes that is the red curves okay and let us consider the x point again so here you see you actually see a large jump in the frequencies right so what happens here if you consider if you consider the dielectric band that is n equal 1 or band 1 so in this case you can see that this is how the magnetic field uh, lines are concentrated okay so you again see the magnetic field null at the center of the vein okay right and uh, that is where the d field will be the largest and that is represented by this white line okay and the d field of the lowest band is strongly localized at the vertical dielectric vein right so d field is strongly localized here in the on the on the veins itself but if you go to the next one you can actually see again the white line which represents the you know nodal regions of the magnetic field that means the electric fields or the d field will be concentrated here in the gaps where you know there is no vein available that means they are mostly in a region where you know you do not have very high permittivity right so that way um, the d field of the n equals 2 band is forced to have you know nodes passing through this okay high permittivity region because it will have its so nodes means the minima okay or the zero values so it will have its peak going through the middle of the two dielectric region and that is how you are actually able to get a kind of orthogonal kind of uh, field pattern from this band to this band and that allows you to have a very large band gap okay and that is with this will be possible because of a high or large jump in frequency and that is why you can see the frequencies of this mode and this mode is very different clear so here again you can carefully see that there are some green dashed lines shown to mark the veins for you okay and uh, the blue and red are marking the negative and the positive uh, magnetic fields which are oriented in the z direction so that's why we are plotting hz right so with that we understood that two different types of structures can give us two different types of band gap so if you consider a uh, array of um, dielectric material something like dielectric rods you can get tm band gap but if you consider the inverse structure something like a connected uh, square array of dielectric veins that can give you te band gap now these are not a complete band gap because you want the band gap to be there for all polarization it means for both te and tm mode the the band gap should exist and how do you do that we have to use our understanding of the previous two cases and design a new structure that will support the feature of both those you know dielectric uh, uh, columns as well as those connected dielectric veins so that you can actually uh, excite both tm and te band gap at the same time okay so this is what we'll do that by combining our observation of the previous two cases we can now design photonic crystal that will have band gap in both direction so this is what we are looking for so so we are actually having a two dimensional photonic crystal of air columns so these are basically holes okay you can say air columns and you have made a hexagonal or triangular array in a dielectric substrate which is imagined to be you know extended infinitely in the z direction so what are the parameters here you can consider the columns to have radius of r okay and uh, they are definitely having these are air so dielectric constant of one and this is the period so you can actually adjust the dimensions of the lattice and this air gap in such a way that you are able to overlap the two 
uh, band gaps in order to get complete band gap in both polarization right so how does this structure work okay so you can see that the idea here is to put a triangular lattice of uh, low permittivity column inside a medium of high permittivity right so if the radius of the columns is large enough then the spot between uh, the columns will look like you know localized regions of uh, high permittivity material so they will work as you know those uh, kind of you can imagine them as kind of dielectric uh, columns right if this these are very large okay and what are these veins then these veins are like you know narrow squeezed paths which are connecting the two of these pots so they are looking like you know the veins so what is happening you are basically trying to have both the two features like uh, columns kind of structure as well as veins together right so once you have this kind of a structure and these are hexagonal lattice you will try to compute the photonic band structure and this is what you will obtain you will see that there is a photonic band gap present for both T and TM polarization that means for all the polarization the band gap does exist okay you can see that for T modes uh, for TM modes okay the first and the second you do not have a band gap but for second and third you have this as your band gap okay similarly for T modes 1 and 2 you have a much wider band gap but you know you need to have the overlap of the two band gaps so you will go with the minimum of the two or the more overlapping area of the two that is this yellow band that you that you can see here and that will be your band gap for all the directions now this is called the complete photonic band gap because uh, th this applies for all the values of k this will work for all polarization of incident light okay and this is how you obtain a complete photonic band gap so what are the uh, specification of the structure you have considered r by a to be 0 0.48 you have taken the dielectric constant of this base material to be epsilon equals 13 okay and when you engineer after after coming to this uh, spec specifications you will see that the band gaps overlap and you are actually able to obtain 18.6 percent complete photonic band gap which is pretty decent one right so with that we understood how complete photonic band gap can be engineered now let us look into a couple of more interesting uh, features like how do you localize light in a photonic crystal by introducing point defects so here we shall discuss uh, the effect of point defects which is created in a photonic crystal array so how do you create a point defect so in a 2d photonic crystal you can think of removing a single column this ye yellow one you just remove it or you replace it by a different size or different kind of material uh, or different shape thing so that this looks different than rest of the lot so this will be treated as a point defect right so in short you can say perturbing just one side okay in a uh, photonic crystal 2d photonic crystal you can introduce a point defect and that ruins the translational symmetry of the lattice now if you think of you know that this is how you introduce a point defect and if you perturb one particular row perturb means either you remove that particular column or you replace those columns with a different kind of material or different size and shape so that they look different than rest of the lot so that can actually uh, work as a line defect you can also truncate your photonic crystal and like this and that will also allow you to you know localize in one particular direction here it is in x direction right so this one doing it only at a particular point we can introduce 
point defect right now when you remove a column or a line and introduce defect you call it line defect now what happens for this you now defects what are the effect of these defects on the photonic band gap so you may think that you know the defect induced state must be evanescent so the defect mode will not be able to you know uh, penetrate into rest of the crystal so if you put a frequency in this particular of light in this defect which is uh, falling within the band gap of this photonic crystal then that light will get localized there or it will get trapped there because the light cannot escape into the crystal because the crystal is not supporting the propagation of that frequency because the frequency falls within the band gap of that crystal right so what happens in a defect mode will decay exponentially away from the defect but then they are localized in the xy plane and but they extend in the z direction right so when you remove this you are actually forming a cavity okay and you can think of this cavity being surrounded by reflecting walls for frequency which lies in the band gap so if you you need to choose the cavity size such that it support a mode in the band gap then light cannot escape and you can actually pin that particular mode into the defect so this is how you can you know have light localization in the photonic band gap now let us look into how we can have linear defects and create web guides so you can uh, use point defects to trap light you can also create linear defects by removing one row or one column or replacing the conventional unit cells with the different size ones and you can actually create a kind of you know uh, waveguide so here again what happens light will not be able to escape into the you know crystal because the frequency of the light falls within the band gap of the crystal so that way you can actually whatever you know shape of the waveguide you require you can create a line defect like that and you will be able to guide light along that particular path so that is something you know amazing because you can actually band light to any degrees and then you know take it through the crystal so wha here what is the important factor okay uh, the important thing is that uh, you need to uh, carve a waveguide out of an otherwise perfect uh, photonic crystal okay and how you do that you do that by modifying a linear sequence of uh, unit cell okay so here you can see how it is done so in this particular figure you can see that for um, the wave vector ky equals 0.3 2 pi by a along the defect okay there is a propagation it means this particular waveguide mode falls within the band gap and uh, this uh, dashed circular things tells you about the position of the dielectric rods which are forming this particular photonic crystal right so light that propagates in the waveguide should have frequency within the band gap of the crystal so that it can remain confined by those reflecting walls of the photonic crystal and then it can be guided along the defect okay so with that we'll stop here that is all for this lecture if you have got any query so you can write an email to me at this particular email address mentioning MOOC and uh, photonic crystal in the uh, subject line thank you mm -hmm.